Hey everybody, Erin from The Impatient Gardener here, and I am at North Wind Perennial Farm in Burlington, Wisconsin, just north of Illinois, and I am here with the amazing Austin Eyshide, fabulous garden designer who has done some amazing things, and he is speaking here at North Wind today, and I imagine on Roy Diblick's channel, you're gonna see a bit of his talk there, but he's also done, has other videos up on Roy's channel, so mm -hmm. I will link to those. Welcome, Austin. No, I'm so glad you. you're here. No. Austin, I have grabbed him. He is just about to give his talk, but I've snagged him so that he can tell us about some favorite plants because Northwind sells um, an amazing variety of plants mm -hmm. and Austin is an expert at mm. plant combinations. Yeah. So I'm, we're gonna tap into his knowledge and he's gonna <laughs> share a few picks with us today. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much for, for having me, Aaron. Yeah. Um, I just want to talk about uh, some of my favorite plants and a lot of times at nurseries we buy what's blooming right and so I think that's the one thing you have to learn not to do because you know plants don't all bloom at the same time they're not right. going to bloom for you at the nursery all year so look at texture look what they're going to look like in other seasons so this is one of my new favorite plants that I know every time I post about it everybody's like what is that plant but it's the shredded umbrella plant uh, Sinalesis echinitifolia is the Latin name but it's purely texture it just sits with these beautiful threaded um, leaves like circular circular leaves and sits above all of your plants so if you have kind of a ground cover layer of like epimedium it's a shade plant and it kind of goes into sun as well but doesn't love like full full sun um, but it's such a great plant for um, just kind of dotting around a group of three and then put a one over there and one over there but i just absolutely love this plant and what kind of soil for this? Sort of woodlandy soil for this, or what would you say soil-wise? Yeah, it actually does dry shade. So that's one of our biggest problem areas with trees and tree roots. And so dry shade, this one absolutely loves. It can take some more moisture and heavier soils as well, but really thrives. And the coolest thing about it is when it comes out of the ground, the leaves are like downwards and super like silvery hairy. And so there's just like, those are the special moments that I love to find in the garden. It that... kind of looks like an alien sort yeah, of yeah, emerging yeah, from the yeah, ground. It's exactly, a great one, yeah, exactly. so. excellent one. Great shade plant. Um, and then another shade to sun plant. I like to talk about hookahs. This doesn't look very exciting, but it's a hookara autumn bride. Have you seen this one before? I grow that, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a it's a green variety and the foliage, the leaves get really big. But what needs to happen is the you need to buy a velosa variety because a lot of the uh, cultivars and species that we have die and are more like an annual because they don't like our winters and they heave out of the soil but this is a really strong performer and it blooms in the fall and has these beautiful yellow or white uh, bell shape um, flowers that come up um, and in the woodland and that dappled sun the way this just flows through there is so beautiful and that's the key is that velosa because a lot of people get really frustrated yeah. growing heucheras because they're like you said yeah. they're almost annuals yeah. now there's another velosa that oh, you use yeah. all the time yeah. right carnival watermelon yeah, right yeah, yeah. so i've seen you name, use that in a lot of your designs yeah. but that's also a velosa yeah correct? yeah so that's one long lived and roy told me about it a few years ago and he didn't have any here right now so i couldn't bring that one over but it's a pinky red color and it's just so beautiful and that's a spring bloomer so sometimes I like to use both of these in the same design because then you have that one blooming in the spring and then this one blooms in the fall for you. So, so don't give up on the lesson no. here. Don't give up on yes, yes, because the there are time. good ones out there. Yeah, you just got to exactly. find them. Exactly. So, um, and then just a quick little plug for Carex. <laughs> it a, is literal a, plug, plug. <laughs> a literal plug. But uh, Carex are just an amazing plant and a lot of people have a hard time paying for you know, a little grass, but um, they are just a workhorse in the shade garden, sun garden. There's wet and dry shade ones. Um, for sun, like a, every use that you need. They're just amazing. Um, yeah, they're just absolutely amazing workhorses. And so use them as a ground cover layer and then you can use other perennials to dot through. And um, yeah, and then they just, they're just so green and lush all winter, summer, and some of them are summer evergreen. Do you have some favorite Carex yeah. that you'd like to sort of mention? Yeah, so this is Carex Montana, and this one is great for dry sun, and it kind of looks like a, it's a very modern look, so if you want a really crisp, clean look, it's about a foot by a foot, and just a clumper, so it's a very tidy look, That's and plant tip. them about a foot apart from each other. Great. So, and then Carex Albicans for dry shade is my favorite Carex. Good. Um, and then Galenia, these are all just workhorse plants and that's what they have here at uh, Northwind. Um, this is called uh, Galenia, uh, Portoranthus is the new name, Trifoliata, and you can see these beautiful red stems. And then they come emerging with some bronze foliage and, the, um, and then they have like a gara-like flower in the spring, yeah. a white flower. Yeah. And, um, and then they have a gorgeous red-orange fall color. So That's a lot great. of people don't think about fall color when it comes to perennials. Right, right. I think the common name is Bowman's root. Bowman's a lot of people would know it by yeah. Bowman's root, right? Yeah. That's that's great. Bowman's root. It, 
Yeah. <laughs> so okay, yeah, that's a that's a great one too. Yeah. Actually, Roy put this in my garden oh, last really? year. Yep. Yeah. So this one yep. dotted through again, like they don't look as good in a large group, but yeah. I think like if you just dot three here, one there, one there, that's like yep. brilliant. Perfect. And then this is um, Deschampsia. I love my grasses. A lot of my yep. gardens are 60 to 70 percent grasses. Yeah. Yep. And so this is uh, tufted hair grass, uh, Deschampsia gold towel. Yep. And it's shade to sun. And um, so it has this semi evergreen, like really formal look mm -hmm. for the base. And then it gets these beautiful panicles about a foot tall. Mm -hmm. And then when it's in dry uh, and dappled light, it just the, the sun hits that. Um, the seed heads and it's just stunning. It's it's like this ethereal glow that Cloud, it gets yeah. behind it when it's when it's yeah. sunlight. Um, soil, what is it like? A little bit of moisture or not moisture? Where are we at yeah. with soil on this yeah, one? Yeah, it's a good question. For uh, Deschampsia, this one is actually the one that is the most drought tolerant, okay. which is that's why I use it the most. But it can do well in like uh, wetter soil and also uh, well drained, but not super super dry like by tree roots. It doesn't okay. want that. So, okay, good. It's a great one. And then I picked in oh the. The uh, gosh, the Jerusalem sage. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this plant, and like, look how tall it is already for the spring season. Um, they're just one that shoots up, and it'll be blooming in about two weeks here. And it's got these beautiful clusters of purple flowers, um, and it's a great vertical for the sun garden. And it can do. It likes a little bit more moisture in the soil. It doesn't want to dry out in the summer. It'll brown out but you can cut it back and it'll come back the next year if it does dry out. I find that this is a really good one that you know d that dries out well. So you leave those flower heads on there. Yeah. It looks really oh, yeah. good even after yeah. those flowers. Yeah, sort of yeah. the seed heads, it's all about seed heads. There's right. no need to be going back and cutting right. things back. And right. um, yeah, it's just a beauty. Perfect. And then the last grass I want to talk about, um, again, it doesn't look super exciting. And when you're at the nursery, it's not all about you know, flower power, right. but uh, Spirobolus aeroides, um, we always think like, oh, I have crappy soil is what everybody thinks, right. but like this is one that loves well-drained, sandy, gravelly oh, perfect. soil. And so it's a native and it's got this beautiful, for a prairie, uh, it's a uh, alkaline drop seed. So we're oh. familiar with prairie drop mm -hmm. seed, but this one has the silvery blue foliage and, um, and it'll get this beautiful wispy uh, clump and then it blooms in late June instead of September like the other right. prairie drop seed. So you get that earlier flower and the and then it reblooms through itself to freshen up in the fall. So you get a double bloom oh. and it's just super oh, airy. And so that is okay. Tell me again. This is what is it? Spirobolus aeroides. Aeroides. The okay. alkali um, Perfect. drop seed. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, That's a amazing. great one. I am not familiar with that one. I got to yeah. get some So in the that. way the That's sun great. hits that. And so if you put it like if you have a group of flocks and you put this next yeah. to it, it just like glows next to it. And it just makes the flock stand out that much more. Perfect. Okay, so. you guys, Austin has left us with some great plant picks here. Um, make sure you check out Roy's channel. He'll have more of Austin's talk. Thank you for That's being good. with us yeah, here today, you. Austin. Yeah. Appreciate sure. it. Sure. And uh, you guys, uh, where can people find you, Austin? Uh, uh, yeah, social Instagram, media Austin Eyeshade Garden Design. Um, AustinEyeshade.com is my website. So. Okay, check Thank out you. Austin. Thanks, yeah. guys. Bye.